yesterday. Oh, where'd it go? There it goes. We talked about our cell project yesterday, and I got several of them actually turned in yesterday. Um, so good morning. So I wanted to share because what I've seen is very good, and I did not use these without asking permission. Um, but I did want to show you because these are so good. So um, this is a snip of Justin's. He also made some awesome album covers to go with it. But because my computer was being funky, I only got a little bit of um, his project. But the, I was so impressed with the song choices. One of my favorites was I'm Moving On here for the endoplasmic reticulum because that's exactly what the endoplasmic reticulum does is it takes the molecules and the things that our cell makes and packages them and sends them where they go. So I thought they were really great. He did a fantastic job. The album covers were great. And I want you to know that you can do a great job um, with the time given because he did a fantastic job in um, in just one day. So everyone, let Justin know how great of a job he did. And thank you again so much, Justin, for letting me share that. Awesome. So yesterday... I will, pull, I, for some reason, it wasn't letting me save it, and that's the best way to bring it. But maybe I'll pull up your album covers tomorrow. Show your album covers. Oh, and, and once I, I might send my song choices to tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. That'd be great. So, where do you find the cell project if you go into your content? Mrs. Schmidt pulled that up for us yesterday. You go into your content in the classroom and you go down through unit three. You are going to be able to see where it says cell project. All right. Awesome. Great job. So we talked about yesterday. Who remembers what we talked about yesterday? Anyone? Passive transport. Good. Passive transport equals what? The movement of what? Yes, the movement of molecules. Somebody throw that up on the board. The movement of molecules with or without energy. Good. The movement of molecules. Somebody else put without energy. Good. I love it. The movement of molecules without energy. So what we're going to do here before we even get started is I'm going to share a link with you. We are going to Please go to the link in the chat. Go to the link in the chat. And we are going to do a jam board today. I want you to illustrate the different types of passive transport. We're going to go in here. Can everybody see my board? I'm seeing some of you join. Are you able to see? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and join that link. And what you're going to do right here is I want you to use the tool. So over here on the left, you can use shapes. You can add text. You can add pictures. I need to go ahead and show me in this pit in this on the slide. I want you guys to tell me and show me the different types of passive transport. 
you teach me today. Passive transport. What is it? Good. High to low concentration. Anonymous badger. I like it. I had a low concentration. Can someone do a drawing of that? Somebody do facilitated diffusion for me. You guys know how to do this. Facilitated diffusion. What do you think? Draw me some pictures. So here's a area in diffusion. There we go. Got some drawlers going. There we go. Proteins in the cell membrane. Good. What do they do? Absolutely. So proteins in the cell membrane. Help molecules move. Show me what that looks like. This is so good, guys. Keep going. I'm proud of you. And then what is osmosis? Somebody come over here and work on osmosis for me. Good. I see someone working on one of those channels. Good. Osmosis is a diffusion of water. Good. Absolutely. From high to low. I like what's going on in facilitated diffusion. This is looking good. I see that channel and the molecules moving through it. Yes, so good. What is that cell membrane made out of? Somebody write what that is. This diffusion picture is spot on. They're going to move until they hit what in diffusion? Oh, I like that somebody put isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic. Good. This is looking super great. Can we get a picture for osmosis? Because this would be a great thing to um perfect until you get equal to equilibrium good this would be a great thing to save save the link for save this a screenshot of good someone put an arrow which way are the molecules going to move in diffusion Perfect. Just show me what way they're going to move. Yep. Good. Good, good, good. Awesome. So the osmosis picture would be very similar to the diffusion picture. You could almost just use like little um, water droplets, right? <laughs> because it's the movement of water. Good. Does anybody else want to add anything else before, before we end this little? I feel really good with 
seeing your progress today, guys. Good job. I love it. Super impressed. Bless you to whoever sneezed in the background. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So moving on to today, we just, yesterday we learned about what passive transport is, right? So today you're going to, you did a further step. You not only spit it back out to me and told me what it was, but you drew drawings and showed manipulation, showing me that you can actually do it right on your own, which is proving to be a, ne a next step of understanding. That is awesome. So today we're going to move into a different type of transport and it is called active transport. So who can kind of give us a rundown of what we're going to do today? Who would like to read? If no Showing one else wants to. So Ireland, what, oh, one second, Pip. What I mean by that is um, you, when you're manipulating it, it means that you can actually draw it. You can actually do it. So you can actually move molecules around and show me what that means to move from high to low concentration. Yeah. Yep, yeah, no problem. All right, Pip, why don't you read the first two and I'll have Ireland read okay, the sure. second two. All right, today's goals. What is active transport and what is exo exocytosis? Give an example. All right, take it away, Irene. What is endocytosis? Give an example. Active transport and facilitated diffusion both involve blank in the cell membrane to help move molecules across the membrane. Good. Perfect. So I left that blank because we talked about that yesterday a little bit. What is that in the cell membrane that helps? Great job. Guys, thank you so much. What was that in the in the wall of the cell or the in the plasma membrane? Yes, the lipids are the, yep, the lipids are the membrane and the proteins are the channels. That would be great, Justin. Thank you so, so much. So, yes, so let's take a peek now at how things move across membranes with energy. Yesterday was all about without energy. Today is with energy. We're going to come back to this slide. Let's go here. All right, so active transport. Active transport is when our molecules are going to move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. So let's do this. Let's go back to a whiteboard here. Mm, why did it not take me there? What? There we go. So let's go here. And I want to do a drawing. We've been talking about what it looks like. No, that's not what I want either. We've been talking about what it looks like to move from an area of high concentration to low. So let's draw right now what it would be to move from low to high. Let's do an area of low over here, an area of high concentration over here. So take to the board guys and show me what it would look like. Because this is not what all right. 
this looks great. Yes. So we talked about yesterday that when you have all of this going on, that molecules are very similar to people, right? Oh, hold on. I made my arrow go in the wrong way. Yep. We want, we typically want to do this. We go, want to go from an area of, no, I did it right. We want to go to an, from an area of high concentration to low concentration. All right. That is, yes, we don't want to be in areas of high concentration. It makes us anxious. We don't have our space. We want to spread out, right? And molecules are very similar to people. They don't love being crowded. So typically, the natural flow is to move from high to low. That is what our molecules prefer. It does not take energy. It does not take bribery to move them from high to low. However, today we're talking about active transport. It requires energy. It requires bribery. So it's saying in order to get molecules to go from a place where they have space and are comfortable, in order to move them into the opposite direction, this is going to require energy. Yes, active transport is the exact opposite of passive transport, right? It's just moving the opposite way. It's moving what we call like against the gradient. Yep. So it's from an area of low concentration to high. So it's instead of saying, hey, you have this room over here that's all by yourself. You have all this space. You have the couch to yourself. Now I'm going to move you over here and you got to share the couch with 10 other people. It's less comfortable. It's less desirable. And to, in order to make a molecule do that, it requires energy. All right. If Mila was up cleaning her room and I said, hey, Mila, do you want to come downstairs and rest? That's active or that's passive transport. She'd be like, heck yeah, mom, I'll be right down. I'm going to plop myself on the couch and watch some TV. But if she was on the couch watching TV and had the, her space and her breakfast and was chilling out watching her shows and I asked her to go upstairs to clean her room, that's going to take a lot of energy on my part, right? I'm going to have to say, get up, walk up the stairs, turn the TV off. I mean it. Don't make me count to three. <laughs> it's going to take more energy on my half as the parent to move her up those stairs, right? Yes. It is the, ex yes, it takes ATP to paddle upstream. I like that, Dustin, right? It takes energy. So you're I like the analogy you made, Dustin, of, of going upstream versus downstream. In active transport, you're having to go upstream, right? You're going into the concentration gradient, into the crowd, and you have to use energy to do that. Good. Let's flip back. Good. And it kind of reminds me of this guy right here on the slide. He's moving against the gradient. All right. Some examples of that are going to be this. All right. So I want you to relate these words as we dive into the lesson. Endocytosis. Exocytosis. And then we're going to talk about this protein pump right here, the sodium potassium pump. All right, so cellular eating and drinking, all right? This is what we call endocytosis and exocytosis. 
SpongeBob to the rescue for this lesson. All right. Endocytosis is when we take in large amounts of material into the cell. Right here we go. So you see how we get this pocket in the membrane that kind of engulfs. All right. Endocytosis brings something what? Into the cell. Endocytosis brings stuff into the cell. This is going to require energy. And exocytosis is going to be just the opposite, all right? Some lysosomes are going to have found some waste. They're going to have packaged them up. And they're going to send them out. Like exit. Exocytosis is going to be a way that a, the cell sends things out to exit the cell. And both of these processes, right, they start with E. E. What could E also stand for? It's the first letter of, yep. Not just endo and exo, but energy. These are both processes that take energy. So these are going to be some visual cues that we can use. Whoops. Visual cues that we can use to help us remember the endocytosis are the way the cells take things in and exit. Good, Justin. But they also are processes, cell processes that require energy. Good. Our sodium potassium pump. All right, this is a protein. What are these guys right here all lined up? What are they? Unit two. A molecule that we need. Yep. They are lipid molecules. Good. Pippin, Justin. Um, just go ahead and send that to me, Pip. Don't put it in the padlet, okay? Send that to me and I'll peek, peek at it. But yes, those are phospholipids, right? There's our cell membrane. This is our cell membrane made of our, our phospholipids, our lipids from unit two. And then here is our protein pump, all right? This sodium potassium pump is one of the most important important um, pumps in the cell is it gets a lot of um, it gets a lot of show time all right because of what it's doing so the sodium potassium pump binds with the, the three sodium atoms right and it brings them in it requires energy so what does that tell us about the amount of sodium inside the cell if it takes energy to bring sodium in. What does that tell us about the amount on the inside? Good, so Dustin, it would tell us that the amount of sodium on the outside is low, but the amount on the inside is what? Yeah, that we have a lot of sodium on the inside. So in order to bring that sodium in, we're gonna have to use energy. Now look right here, look at the triangular shape here. What, what goes into this slot right here? What goes into this slot? Good. Yep. The phosphate from ATP fits into the pump right here. All right. So the energy that is required to move the pump goes here from ATP. You can see the ATP that the cell has to use. It's on the inside of the cell. 
The cell has to use that to pump the sodium in or out. All right, this is a, the sodium potassium pump. Right, it has to use the potassium from ATP, has to use the energy to pump that sodium in or out. All right. Here you're gonna see, oh, you're gonna see the sodium getting pumped out. So in this case, the low is on the inside and the high is on the outside. And our cell is pumping that sodium out. It's kind of like loading um, batteries or loading some, uh, you know, like a cartridge into something. You have those slots they have to fill. And part of that is energy. Right? Good. Let's look here and compare our active and tr passive transport. All right. So here in passive transport, we have those protein channels that we talked about in facilitated diffusion. All right. But that's pumping from high to low, the natural way of moving things. Over here in active transport, you're pumping from an area of low into an area of high. So this might be a good slide for it, for you to copy or snip if you take notes. All right, help me with this. Where do these go? All right, so right here is our key. You've got glucose or sugar over here. It's moving from high, an area of high concentration to low. Which one would this be? Does it need an ATP pump, a channel, or a membrane? What do you think? Good, Dustin. Good. I would say if I was doing this, I would pick either a channel or a membrane, right? Because it is going to look a little bit like yesterday. It's going to, I'm going to be like, it's one of these two. And I'm not sure what it is until I look at the other options. So let's look at the other option. The next option is going to help us. What does the blue dot represent? What does the blue dot represent? Water. So what is going on over here in this one? We've got, are we moving from high to low or low to high? Good. We're moving from high to low. We're moving water across a membrane from high to low. So which one? Somebody draw a line. Which one goes here? This one helps us. Yes, that's imperfect. It's osmosis. Yeah, I think we're going to, I guess it should say H2O, huh? We're going to assume. <laughs> You're right, Ireland. It should be H2O. Not O2. But we're going to say this is water. There we go. Yep, somebody got this right. So let's say this is water. Man, it is early for me to be messing that up. But I want to say that key is actually wrong. But that's going to help us. All right, and this is sodium. We talked about sodium today. What is the sodium going to trigger for us? That sodium. Yep, the sodium potassium pump. Good. And 
I love that Dustin said it's it's look how it's moving. Look at that arrow of how it's moving. It's moving from low to high. That tells us we need energy. Yep. Nope, he is right. That's perfect. Yep. It's moving from low to high, so we need that energy pump. And that which puts us right here with needing the channel for this guy right here, for the glucose. How do we feel about that? Does that make sense when we compared those today? Give me, let's do smiley faces. How do we feel? That would make way more sense if it were H2O. Wow. Thanks for catching that, Ireland. What? Good. So we're between a smiley and a meh. Most of us are getting to that smiley. Good. All right. Let's do something fun with the last couple of minutes here, okay? So we go back to this thing that we've been hitting on the last couple of days, the last couple of lessons. Why didn't it load? Okay, it did, it did load. It is where we are, where we want to be, where we're going. I guess this one doesn't like me. Let's try this one. There we go. All right, measuring our success. All right, so yesterday we were feeling good about passive transport, right? Today we manipulated passive transport a little bit more. So we, I feel like we were getting more confident. We built confidence in our passive transport. It's not letting me write on it, of course. All right, so yesterday we talked about passive transport. Today we, we built our confidence and learned about active transport. Let's take it a step farther, even before tomorrow, all right? And maybe going into tomorrow. So tomorrow, I want you to be able to demonstrate both passive and active transport for me, okay? I want you to get, be able to tell me similarities. I want you to be able to tell me differences. So let's go back to that Jamboard, all right, that we did earlier. Let me get that link and put it back in chat. So what I want you to do is I want you to each pick a slide. When you get a slide in this link, I want you to put your name on it so, to claim it. And I want you to pick passive transport or active transport. And I want you to Draw a picture and describe it, okay? Draw a picture and describe it. You don't need to do both, All right? So Pip has this one. Do this or and add new ones as you do, need to. Grab a slide on here. There's Sam, there's Pip. All right, so click through here, claim a slide. This is mandatory. There's Aria. Do it up. You can set your background. Did you guys know that you can add images from Google? You can do Google image searches in here and add pictures. So you can draw pictures. There's Ireland. All right, pick a slide. Put your name on it. There's Ava, Olivia, 
All right, I'm just going to keep adding these. Pick a slide. Because then we're going to be able to scroll through here. And look at some great examples. All right, there's 23 of us in here. Faith, Judah, Olivia, good. Ava, yes. Riker, and Ireland, and Aria, and Sam, and Pip. Everybody get one. And then go ahead and start this. We have like the last five minutes of class. Pick active or... And I won't keep scrolling through, so if I'm making you nervous, pick active or passive. You can pick osmosis. You can pick facilitated diffusion, diffusion. You can highlight that sodium potassium pump. I'm sure I don't have any questions. Yes. So pick active transport or passive transport or and tell me what it is, and make a drawing or give me a picture to describe it, okay? Teach me. I don't care how you do it, but teach me. If you had to teach me about one of these, how would you do it? What would it look like? What would it look like? I'm gonna peek through these in a minute. I'm just giving you some time. All right, I'm going to just click through some of these. Good. That's good, Pip. Moving from high to low. Like the, what all you're adding. That looks great. Passive. Good. Diffusion. Sam, that looks great. Aria is going to do active. I can't wait to see the picture for this. Requires energy. That looks really nice, Aria. Good, Ireland. I love that arrow showing it through the channel, ATP. Low to high, high to low. Perfect. Riker showed an example of kind of the differences. I like that. Ava, good. She's going to do diffusion. I like all the straight line or the straight straightness of these circles. It does my OCD mind well. Good, Judah. He's going to show us active. He's got his high and low going on. Faith. I love that you mentioned across the membranes. That's important. Good job, Amari. Good. I, the ATP pump. I love it. This is looking great. Yes, Kai, yes. I love your representation with people. That's awesome. See, everybody's is just a little different, and that's what is going to help us learn because what my example may not touch base with everybody, but just like what when Dustin said pushing upstream or something. Or different pictorial examples. Good, Ellie. 
Good. And if you want, you can draw your names. You can also use the text box. That made good job, Kyra. Will you tell me which one this is? Moving from high to low, just label that for me, but that looks great. This is fantastic, Zach. Yes, good, good, good. I love this too. Show me the direction with an arrow and label that and that's looking great. Good, Justin. It would be fun if somebody showed what the membrane looks like in a cell, maybe added the lipids. Awesome. Zion, this is great. Neve is on it. Passive, high to low. Nice, Josh. I'm fine with this too. I love this. Good. Josh is bringing in some pictures. I love this. Good job. All right. We'll finish up and then we'll head out of class. I want to spend some time um, coming back to that tomorrow and looking at those because they are so good. So good. So that is it for today, you guys. How how do you feel about today's lesson on your way out? Give me, give me a star rating. Let's do a star rating. I love seeing you guys do the explaining. That makes me feel good. How was today's lesson? Have a great day. We'll start there tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Awesome. Hey, Lily. So we are working on, um, you're working on active transport today. So yesterday was passive transport. We look in the lesson as to where that is in the content. If you look on uh, the announcement page, I try to post... kind of a schedule of what we're doing in class. So it's 3.09 today, 3.09. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, why would, why would the, why would it have the recording have to be turned off? I think because you, class is over, right? What do you mean? Like. What? You mean right now? You mean why haven't I stopped the recording? Because class is over. That's why. I know, but I like to keep the recording going for questions because sometimes when people listen oh. back and they All hear right, the questions. Then never mind. <laughs> yep, I just like to leave it on when they do that because it helps me. No, 
you're fine. I didn't know if you were saying that the recording needed to be off when you shared your cell assignment. <laughs> so I was confused. I was like, ah, you're, you're able to share without having to go off recording. All right, we'll make sure um, to, okay, sounds good. All right, I don't want to make anyone late. Head on out to your next class, and I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming, guys. Oh, no, you're totally fine. Don't, don't apologize one bit, are you? Don't apologize one bit. You have such a good day.